action. So thank Stand you. Up, make that motion. Joe makes a motion. Second. Pat seconds. Can I do all in favor? Well, well, you have to ask for comment, public comment, um, council comment. Yeah. On the motion, is there any questions? Any comments? Sid, if I could just real quick, I, I also um, was aware of this issue and had spoke with, uh, you know, seen the, the, the restrictions down there for the engine coming out of the uh, third district firehouse onto those roads. So it, it was, it, it's a necessary adjustment for sure. Perfect. Jill, any comments come in? Any questions? No. Okay. All right. Not hearing anything more. Jill, can you pull the board? Vice President Murphy? Yes. Mr. Antonello? Yes. Mr. Blaylock? Yes. Mr. Glasson? Yes. Mrs. Wagner? Yes. Uh, so next on the agenda, it's called six, but I don't think it is because we just did six. Um, is our consent agenda. Um, so I'll read the items on the list. It is uh, consider approval of a voucher list and requisitions dated January 21, 2021 in the amount of 2,239,799.71. Consider approval of December 17, 2020 council minutes and consider resolution. I'm sorry, consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Bristol Township renovation of police and staff locker rooms in the amount of $350,000. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Bristol Township's fire marshal office PPE in the amount of $15,000. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Bucks County Rescue Squad equipment acquisition in the amount of $13,396.68. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Levittown Fairless Hills Rescue Squad training equipment acquisition in the amount of $15,000 and re consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Edgley Fire Company gear replacement in the amount of $15,000. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Levittown Fire Company number two engine room renovations in the amount of $16,000. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Croydon Fire Company equipment and ventilation replacement in the amount of $16,000. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the third district fire company equipment acquisition in the amount of $16,000. Consider resolution authorizing the acceptance of a redevelopment authority municipal grant for the Newportville Fire Company firefighter gear replacement in the amount of $15,000. And lastly, consider resolution authorizing the submission of traffic signal approval form TE-160 for permit 61-4016, New Falls Road, State Road 0252, and Apple Tree Place site driveway. I'll make that motion to accept the consent agenda. All right, motion by Marianne Wagner. Second. Seconded by Joe. On the motion, is there any questions? All in favor, can I do that? Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye. yes. Anyone opposed? No. Lovely, thank you. Next up, we have the report from our township manager, the lovely Randy Elton. Take it Aye. away, Randy. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Uh, first, I want to apologize. I had a brain fart. I just accepted my own invitation and I realized I didn't sign in as the township. So that's why it wasn't recording properly, going out to Facebook Live or um, YouTube Live properly. Um, so it, it is now doing all those things, streaming 
And um, if anybody has any questions of why it started in the middle of the meeting, that would be why. Um, so there is going to be future availability now to um, see presentations. So again, I apologize. Um, Learning curve, yep. <laughs> well, I did it fine last month. <laughs> Brain part. Um, so uh, tonight uh, we have, um, I just have a few uh, quick updates. We are doing um, very well. I gave a brief update during executive session. Uh, financially, um, we, uh, as, as Cindy, as Vice President Murphy had uh, expressed of all the accomplishments we did in 2020, even during a pandemic year, we um, also have uh, financially been, um, been very fortunate. Um, the only loss in revenue that we're seeing that is, um, you know, it's a significant loss in revenue is from the uh, interest that took a hit when um, the market, cr the market um, crashed and, and the interest has not come back uh, to fruition of what we budgeted. Other than that, we look to have, um, you know, non-audited numbers of having um, a close to a, a $3 million surplus uh, for the year 2020. Um, and we, we still accomplished a lot. We did a lot of the capital improvements, which is great. Uh, we're going forth with uh, expansive capital improvements for 2021. Um, so, um, you know, considering, you know, considering everything that has happened in the world over the last year, uh, Bristol Township is uh, financially uh, sound, which is great. And I'm happy to report. We um, are continuing to work on our um, I and I issues, our inflow and infiltration issues for our um, sanitary uh, storm system or sanitary system. And um, Steve Walsh is on here tonight. Um, we, uh, I've been working with Steve um, from Gilmer Associates uh, on the expansion of the wastewater treatment plant, and have uh, had great confidence in his work with the um, much needed work for the I and I work. Um, throughout the throughout the cordon treatment plant service areas. So tonight I put forth a recommendation to appoint uh, Steve Walsh slash Gilmer Associates as our township sewer engineer. So a motion will be in order. I'll make that motion. All right, motion by Mary Ann Wagner. I'll second it. Seconded by Ray Blaylock. On the motion, any questions? All in favor. Ooh, aye. 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 Hold Ooh. on. Any comment? Any any public comment? I'm sorry, Madam President. Well, I appreciate your guidance. That's why you're here. Okay. I knew there was a reason. <laughs> well, it's, it's the <laughs> Zoom. Zoom has you know the norms are not the norms anymore. Yeah. We, we have yeah. to learn to well. adopt. Zoom norms. Well, I thought I said on the motion, is there any question? You did. Yeah, but, okay. no, want, but, but I want to specifically get an answer from Jill, whether there any emails came in or anything came in from the public. Just to That's be a, a new norm for Zoom. Oh, I, okay. I don't remember. There were no emails or comments that came in. Council was free to vote on the motion, Madam President. Thank you. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Excellent. Passed unanimously. Abstentions. Any abstentions? <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Randy Flager. <laughs> so, uh, so with that, I am just going to um, ask Steve to give a brief update of where we are with the I and I uh, work. Uh, I know that there were some questions on how long this first round uh, will take with the point replacements and the um, um, curative right. lining, um, the slip lining. Uh, and then, you know, what we're going to do moving forward. Thanks, Steve. Sure. Thank you, Randy. Uh, so right now, Mr. Rehab is out there doing spot repairs. They've got another two to three weeks of those spot repairs, and then they're going to start manhole to manhole full length slip lining repairs, uh, both in the Delaware Ave and in the Silver Lake system. So that is the update on where we are with that. Uh, we recently received a proposal to do some lateral work and Randy and I need to discuss that as well to clean up the I and I at those points as well. And Randy and I have also been discussing the need for pipe replacement in both of those two systems as well. 
so that we can move forward with making sure that the systems are tight and ready to go when the wastewater treatment plant uh, comes online, hopefully, knock on wood, in the next 18 months. Do we know how long the, um, the, the first round of the I&I &I with the point replacements and the slip lining uh, will take? Like, so, I know they're working on it, but do we know when they start the slip lining, how long that's going to take? They are anticipating to be done by the end of March. Wonderful. Thank you, and Steve. That is all I have for uh, the Township Monthly Manager's Report. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Welcome Thanks, Steve. aboard, Steve. Good to be on board at your service. Next on the agenda, report from Township Solicitor. Mr. Flager, let's hear yes, from you uh, again. Madam President. And council, be prior to the uh, meeting tonight, we had an executive session. And during that executive session, we discussed various legal matters, personnel matters, and labor issues. We wanted to report that and, and so that it's on the record that we had that. And other than that, I have nothing uh, further other than to say, um, we, it's a pleasure to be, represent the township. We look forward to working with everyone. It's been a pleasure to have our new township manager to work with as well. And of course, our continuing with our engineers and the other professionals. Thank you very much. Unless there's questions, I have nothing further at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Flager. Does welcome. anybody have any questions for our solicitor? All right. We'll head on to new business. 9A. We have Ingerman Development Company, LLC, 5 Powell Lane in Collingswood, New Jersey requesting revised sketch plan review in order to construct 56 apartments on the property located at 1150 Norton Ave, Bristol, tax parcels 5-65, 18, 19, 27, 28, 29, 32, 33, 37, 38, 39, and 80 in an R3 residential zoned district. So who do we have here for Ingerman Development? Hi, good evening. I'm Bill Kerr. Bill Kerr. Uh, I'm the attorney on the project. We have a number of our uh, professionals. We also have Mr. Bruce Morgan, uh, who's a co-developer from BCM Affordable Housing. We have a number of representatives of Ingerman. Um, I think the presentation is going to be led primarily by uh, Greg Elko. You'll recall that we were here, I think, last month and uh, had, had made a presentation on this project. Um, there were some comments that were received and we've since revised the uh, sketch plan. So Greg, are, are you prepared to share your screen and, uh, and, and oh, yeah. uh, give, give the board an upgrade? Thanks. So yeah. go ahead. If I'm able to do that, I will try it now. All right, great, thank you. Uh, so um, the project is the lighthouse at Norton Avenue. Um, this is just a, a list of the development team. And you recall we were here uh, in front of you uh, back in December uh, to give a sketch plan presentation of the project at that time. Uh, just a recap, uh, the location is 1150 Norton Avenue. Um, it's mid-rise four-story building. There's 56 uh, units that uh, 62 plus are age restricted, uh, the com combination of one bedroom and two bedroom. Um, it's going to be a mixed income community. Uh, there's uh, mostly affordable units with a few market rate units that are there. Um, the building is going to have a variety of amenities, including a community room, arts and crafts, fitness room, the medical suite, residential services. And uh, the goals here are important to restate, just provide housing to an underserved population in Bristol Township, uh, primarily the low income seniors and strengthen the community and foster uh, re relationships with our local organizations. So uh, back in December, we presented this plan to you. Um, the plan was a consolidation of 11 separate properties into three parcels. Uh, the main parcel, parcel one, has the existing church to remain with the apartment building built around it. Parcel two at the time had a daycare facility with its parking lot. And then parcel three was a smaller uh, parking lot across Norton Avenue uh, for 11 parking spaces. Uh, at this time, uh, when we presented the plan, uh, there were 56 total parking spaces, but there was a concern raised by the council um, 
numerous concerns about the adequacy of parking um, and you know the potential demand that the different uses were going to uh, create. So what we did is we went back and looked at our uh, program. Uh, we acknowledged the concern about parking. Uh, we what we did is we did a, a, a sort of a cursory parking study uh, to try to determine what the peak parking demand would be on any given day of the year. And knowing there's a church here, uh, the peak parking demand typically will be a holiday, church holiday, or during some type of you know special event. And what we did was we split up the uses that uh, are proposed and uh, allocated parking demand based on the different allocation of those uses. So for the senior apartments, we have spaces for the residents and uh, for this type of uh, facility, about 20% of the units is what the parking demand would be. So 12 spaces. We have five spaces demand for full and part-time staff and then five spaces for visitors based on what we believe to be the peak visitation periods. And then for the church, uh, based on discussions with the pastor, uh, parishioners uh, will normally attend either, you know, holiday week, uh, Easter week, Christmas week, or some type of event. And the most, um, the highest demand that we would ever experience here would be 40 spaces. Uh, and that will probably occur once or twice a year at the most. Um, in addition to that, there's, uh, again, on the largest shift, about five uh, spaces that are needed by various church staff. So we came up with a parking demand of 67 spaces, again, worst case scenario and the worst day of the year uh, that would be required by the project. And so what we did is we went back and we removed the daycare center from the plans. Uh, the daycare center is going to be moved to a different location nearby, somewhere in the community. It may be in a lease of a building or a purchase. It's going to be part of a separate application, but we've basically taken it out of this application. And so what we're able to do is to effectively increase the availability of parking spaces uh, by 16 spaces from 51 spaces on the original plan to 67 spaces on the new plan. And it actually will remove any demand that would have otherwise been created by the daycare facility. So we have our new plan here. And uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it a little better. Uh, so Lot one uh, retains the existing church to remain. It's got the apartment building uh, built around the church. We have a, a, a 11 space parking lot here between the church and Elwood Avenue. We kept the 11 parking spaces across the street. But now instead of the daycare facility on lot two, we now have a 30 car parking space parking lot uh, that will serve this development. And you can see it's in close proximity to the building. It'll provide overflow parking for the church during any special service. Uh, and then in addition to the on-lot parking for the, uh, in the three different parcels, uh, we have some street parking along Norton Avenue and along Elwood Avenue. And the breakdown of the demand of parking we added to the plan here. So that's the summary of the change. Uh, we wanted to come back to council uh, to present this change. We want you, you all to know that we heard the comments about and concerns about parking. Um, and it had given us an opportunity to go back and reconsider the plan. Uh, we did pull ourselves off of the zoning agenda for this month because we wanted to get this back in front of you all. Um, and we are, our next stop after this meeting is to attend the zoning hearing board uh, in early February to present the plan. We do require a number of variances for the project, um, but that will be uh, handled at our, our zoning hearing board. And so that, that's the change of plan. We wanted to uh, sort of solicit some feedback as well from the council members uh, to see if you know, there was any additional comments that they had on this plan. Thank you, and uh, I, I appreciate the addition of the parking spaces. I had one question though, um, or one comment, um, that it, it, on the agenda, it just refers to 56 apartments. Is the deed or will, will something have the, this, these are restricted to senior housing, that they're not just apartments, but- Yeah, that yes. Yes, uh, this is Bruce Morgan, I'm the co-developer. Um, these projects, this project will be financed 
uh, by the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency who will be providing our tax credits. And one of the things that they will mandate is that we will have a deed restriction and the deed restriction will say that this will be for senior housing. Um, actually, it, we, we have been working very closely with Bucks County and they have asked us to not do it at 62, but they think it'll open uh, the project up if we go 55 and older. So we just didn't have, a, the, the, there was an overlap in our conversations with Bucks County, but it'll be 55 plus uh, senior housing and it will be deed restricted. So um, okay. no one will be able to come in in 10 years and put uh, 22 year olds in here or 30 year olds, families. Correct. Okay, thank you. Cindy? Yes. Um, <clears throat> after last month's meeting, I, I went and took a look at and spoke to some folks over at uh, McIntosh Regency, uh, a senior facility run by the county that my mother resides in. And ask them about the parking and what kind of volume for the amount of residents they have. And it turns out that um, the estimates that were presented are fairly accurate. That's all senior housing and more than half of the residents there do not own vehicles and park in their lot. And that gave me a little more uh, confidence that the estimates for the parking needs were in line with um, what's appropriate for this type of development. Just wanted to add that. Yes. Now I appreciate it. And I, I assume, I mean, so I see there's a copy of these plans go to the fire marshal along with a number of other um, areas. But I mean, I just how close the, I guess they'll comment on how close the church is to the building. And, you know, it's only eight feet at some p at some places. Um, and I'm sure the fire marshal will comment whether that's acceptable or not. It seems that it may be a fire hazard, but that, uh, that's not my area of expertise. It's just my eye looking at it. So I, that's my comment. Our, our, that's our, our architects have been in contact with the fire department and the fire marshal, and we're totally committed to working with them and working out any concerns that they may or may not have. Councilwoman Murphy, um, okay. can I ask a few questions? Uh, Mr. Elko, can you pull up the slide that shows the breakdown of the parking uh, that you anticipate being required? So I just wanted to um, offer a little bit of context to what's in the engineering review letters, um, our letter, and then also Pannoni, the traffic engineer's review letter. So the total parking provided is labeled as 67. Of those 67, 15 of those are considered on-street parking. They're shown on the plan as parallel parking uh, spaces on the streets. Um, Pannoni's review letter uh, has concerns regarding seven of the spaces on Elwood Ave and recommends relocating spaces on Watson Ave. Uh, which um, there are much, There's none yet. Not, not, not showing them. Right. Plan. So if you take away the, so then the requirements from the zoning ordinance are based on off street parking requirements. Um, so you, we have to assume that if we lose the seven on street parking spaces potentially, then this demand chart uh, may not show that there are sufficient spots, even if you do count those on street parking spaces. But like I said, the off street parking requirements just by ordinance, and that would be, you know, ignoring the specifics of this use, but that requires as many as 300 parking spaces. So from a strict ordinance perspective, uh, the project requires 300 spaces. They're off street parking spaces. They're providing 52. Um, but I think that without having more feedback from Pannoni, I'm not sure, Greg, if you've been able to look at that review letter, if you've given any thought to maybe how you can illustrate if this demand chart can meet what you're providing. I can, yeah. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Kurt. Uh, and I appreciate the comments. The, uh, there were a couple of comments in Pannoni's letter regarding parking. The one you noted was 
that these seven spaces along Elwood were in line with the, uh, the uh, I guess I'll call it the, the eastbound lane that continues on Elwood Avenue past the intersection. So there was a, a recommendation to relocate them. Uh, I was looking at that. Um, another comment in the letter was consider, I think consider putting spaces along Watson because we do show none at this point in time. Um, and another comment, uh, which was a good comment from Pannoni, was that this uh, part of the parking lot could potentially be rearranged to move these uh, four parallel spaces to the other side here, which actually would give us an opportunity to add one or two more uh, on that lot. And I think we can do that pretty easily. So I think the combination of removing or relocating these seven spaces to either along Watson uh, and or uh, within parcel two uh, and or I'll point it out on the other side of Elwood, which it wouldn't cause uh, an issue with conflicting lanes. I think we can keep the same number uh, and uh, arrive at the same uh, demand uh, of 67 spaces. You're right, we are using off street parking or on street parking, I'll call it to satisfy the demand, uh, but that's the condition that is there today. Uh, the pastor has told us that during church services, it, you know, people park along the street to use the church, um, even when the lot is not full. It's actually a little more convenient to park along Norton Avenue uh, to walk over to where the church is today. Um, but I, I feel confident that we can maintain that 67 number, uh, even if those seven spaces are relocated elsewhere. Uh, have, have you guys explored the right of way width of Elwood? Is there an opportunity to potentially widen the road. I mean, I know you guys are desperate for finding spaces. I'm just wondering if there's any other ways to help to. Uh, that's a good. That's a good point. We can look at that. My concern about space on the south side of Elwood is that it's wooded there, and there may be some wet spaces over there, uh, wetland areas. I'm not sure, but my untrained eye tells me that there's some low spots in those woods. Um, I don't know how far in the right of way goes. We could take a look at that and see if there is an option. Uh, but, you know, if, uh, if, if that's something that we can't do, I think putting them along Watson is pretty easy because we do have adequate room there. There's a lot of space in between where the cartway is now and where our property lines are on other, either side of the uh, other road. And actually it would be closer to the uh, uh, apartment building at that point anyway. I just want to take this opportunity to remind any public that live public on the Zoom it, for if you have any questions or comments, where to email your comments to or questions to. It's Jill Mayer, and that's spelled J M A I E R at bristoltownship.org. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments or? I had one sin. We're kicking around. Will, will this building be sprinklered? Or are we talking yes. strictly alarms? Yeah. No, no, it will be fully sprinklered. I don't think you cannot do that in this type of development. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure on where the line was drawn exactly on, on square footage or, or uh, level. Of amount of floors or what where the where the line was drawn there so jill can you check and see if anybody has any comments uh from the public i did not get any emails or calls okay okay thank you you're welcome and Randy Flager, is this a motion or do we just say? Uh, no, this is, this is just a sketch plan presentation. There's no motion involved here. Okay. Uh, just coming in, you know, as Greg okay. said, presenting their project, getting some additional feedback from the board is all. So there's no motion. Okay. All right. I, uh, Sin, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy to go on record in, with a statement that I certainly hope that, that this can be resolved. I think it's a great project for our community. I think no, I it brings, agree. you know, it, it it's going to bring uh, some affordable housing to our senior community, which is desperately needed. And um, 
you know, good luck. I'm, 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 you know, for what it's worth, I'm kindly disposed to what you're doing. Keep working at it. Yep. We appreciate that. Agree. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate your direction and the board's direction. And um, we really look forward to working with you all. We heard you uh, regarding your comments for parking. Um, we were very happy to be able to find some more spaces. We will continue to work with your professionals and uh, we look forward to a long relationship with Bristol Township. All right. Thank well, you. Great. Thank you. And we look forward to Thank seeing you. you back here again soon. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. So next up on the agenda is application of 390 George Patterson Boulevard Associates LLC, 1 Tower Bridge, 100 Front Street, Suite 560, West Conshohocken, PA, requesting final land development approval to construct an industrial warehouse building located at 390 George Patterson Boulevard in Bristol, tax parcel number 5-62-001-2. C11 in an M2 heavy manufacturing zoned district. Who do we have? Good evening. This is Andy Miller from Ritu Associates on behalf of uh, the applicant for this project. Hello, Andrew. Good evening. Did the, um, uh, did the township <laughs> receive the PowerPoint that I had emailed yesterday for this project? We did, but we're also sharing the screen. So if you would like to go through your own, at your own leisure. I can do that. Is everyone seeing that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Okay, so uh, good evening. As I said, my name's Andy Miller. I'm a project manager with Ritu Associates. On the line also, we have uh, Aaron Rapucci, who's a partner and director of development with uh, 390 George Patterson Boulevard Associates, LLC. Um, and as we're here this evening, we had been in front of the planning commission back in December, um, presenting the, the same project. And the purpose of our presentation this evening is on the final land development plan for a condo unit, part of the 390 George Patterson Boulevard development, um, which is uh, essentially the Dow chemical um, uh, site, uh, industrial site. Also con uh, seeking conditional approval of the final plan and the requested modifications that we have. So just by way of background and an overall view of the project, um, this is the Dow Chemical uh, Facility. George Patterson Boulevard is over here to the left, uh, to the west side of that, which is actually a private road. Um, and the pink line here in the center labeled condo unit boundary is where our applicant is developing the, the footprint of the condo that they're developing as part of the project. As an aerial view from an existing condition standpoint, um, the, essentially they're taking up this northwest corner of the project where there's a large grass area. At one time, I believe it was uh, paved and then returned to grass. Uh, and there's some associated paving around it and uh, uh, quite a few utilities in the area private, all, all private utilities that they'll be locating as part of their project as well. So as I stated, the overall site is 28.85 acres on the Dow Chemical site. They're only impacting 2.78 acres of their unit, their condo unit. Um, and as I described there in the aerial, the site's bounded by George Patterson Boulevard Veteran Highway and existing asphalt on the east, south, and west sides from the site. It is in the M2 heavy manufacturing district, 
um, which has permitted uses of manufacturing, research and development, wholesale businesses, which would be storage and warehousing. Right now, they are developing this as a spec site. Uh, they don't have a user for the facility yet. So um, that's why the permitted uses for the site uh, definitely fit within the characteristics of the site and what they're marketing it to uh, for a user. Their building they're proposing is approximately 60,000 square feet. Uh, it would have six dock spaces on the east wall and then 65 passenger car spaces uh, on the, the north and west side of the site. By way of access, we actually have three access points um, on George Patterson Boulevard with our parking layout, and I'll go to that next. Um, and we have two access points to the south and west um, as well through the rest of the, the Dow site. So over the last several months since we've submitted the project to the township, uh, we've had um, several uh, iterations with revisions with uh, the township engineer as far as other agencies. Um, so I just listed them out here for everyone's benefit. Um, we received letters from the Bucks County Planning Office and resubmitted to them, Bucks County Conservation District, uh, we received our NPDES approval and approval from the Conservation District. Uh, we're waiting on uh, what is should be an approval of a sewage planning module exemption uh, from PADEP. We've also received comments from the Sewer Authority, uh, from the uh, Water Authority. We've received letters uh, from the Township Fire Marshal. We've also received approval from the Traffic Engineer. Um, and we have the latest technical letter from uh, the Bristol Township engineer uh, as we responded back at the beginning of the, at the planning meeting, we're able to um, address all those technical comments. We don't have any concerns within that letter uh, and we'll be able to comply with all the, the open items. Um, also by way of history, um, I was not involved in the project, but there were several variances that were granted back in 2004. There were some other waivers that were granted as part of a pre uh, previous land development plan in 2007. Um, our plan that we're proposing for this small area does comply with the bulk zoning requirements and fits within the variances and waivers uh, that were approved. This plan um, requests 13 modifications and waivers uh, from that original uh, or, or for this plan. Now I would like to flip over just to the uh, site plan for everyone's benefit. I thought I had it in the uh, PowerPoint here, but I didn't. Everyone see my screen still okay? You're yes. good. Yes, thank you. So in this, again, you can see the orientation of the building, uh, our dock spaces, our parking to the north and to the west. Um, and then from a stormwater features, um, we're going to have a stormwater BMP on the northern side of the site and on the western side of the site. So even though they are responsible for all the improvements within their condo line, which is the black line we have here, um, there, there are some items that they need to make the, the site work, such as stormwater management, and they're outside their lease area, but within a common east lease area uh, within the condo. So that's an overview of the plan. I'd be happy to stop and answer any questions um, and uh, can move through the waivers if you'd like me to hit all of them, or we can just talk at a high level, whatever the commission's preference is. Hey, Kurt, do you want to jump in and give us any comments or feedback? Uh, no, I would recommend just reading through the waiver requests. Uh, the project is um, pretty cut and dry. They've given us everything we've uh, we've asked them to and just a conditional approval to complete the remaining items in the resolution. Um, All right, so. so I think that what we have continually been doing, I mean, the, the resolution has been sent out. Um, I think that we haven't been going through each section I uh, Kurt, unless there's a, a specific waiver that might re might require conversation, um, you know, we typically have just said, you know, the applicant, the the solicitor asks the applicant if they've received the 
uh, resolution, if they're in agreement to all. So we, you know, so if they're in agreement to the resolution, then I don't think we need to go one waiver by one waiver. Yeah, Kurt, are there any specific waivers that are possibly an issue or are they all good? No, they're all good. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there, uh, this time I would say, uh, you know, Mr. Miller, you previously received the resolution, correct? Yes, we have received it. We've reviewed it with our legal counsel as well as with our client, um, and, and we don't have any issues with it. Uh, it. It seemed to be a reiteration of the latest comment letter, which we agree with everything in that. In that case, Madam Vice President, it's uh, ready for counsel to open up for a motion for a resolution and ask any additional questions or have any additional discussion. I'll make that motion. motion. Oh, oh boy, wow. they both did. <laughs> I'm gonna say Marianne made a motion and second by Pat. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> On the motion, is there any questions? And Jill, I'll put that out there to you too to let me know if um, anyone has sent you any comments or questions during this. They did not. Okay. Well. Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, op any opposed? Abstained? Well, great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much and for your you time. Thank you for expanding in Bristol Township. Thank yep. you. Good luck with the project. Thank, thank you. Our you. applicant's very excited to get started, so we appreciate right. all your help. Thank you. Welcome. Thank Good you. luck. Okay. Uh, ready, we're back in action. Next on the agenda is application of Bruce A. Goodman, 636 Old York Road, Jenkintown, PA, requesting pre preliminary and final land development approval for a proposed vehicle storage area on the property located at 6200 Bristol Pike, Levittown, tax parcels number 5-73-118 and 5-73-118-001 in an M2 heavy manufacturing zoned district. Who do we have? Good evening. Kristen Pianzio from Hamburg, Rubin, Mullen, Maxwell, and Lupin. I represent the owner. I have with me CJ Bach from Bowler Engineering. Nice. And CJ, do you want to control the screen or can, can we let Randy do it? I, I'm fine letting Randy do it. All right, Randy, I'm going to be quick. So this will be painless for you. Yeah. So I bring to you a blighted property. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are very excited about getting rid of. So um, this is 6200 Bristol Pike. The owner is in her 80s. This is neglected. It is an eyesore. It's the vacant window wizards, as you probably all know. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Goodman is with Goodman Properties. He's been a land developer for 40 years, has hundreds of commercial properties, and he loves to clean things up. So this 9.7 acre parcel is actually comprised of two that we're going to merge and provide a rear connection um, to the property next door. So these slides, slow down, Randy. The first view just gave you some shots of, of the property and everything that's on it and how it's all. Township Council is very aware of this project. Yeah, we're so familiar so. with that eyesore, yes. Yeah, I, yeah no surprises. Yeah. I, love, I love to come in with ugly pictures. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so Randy, if you, yeah, stop there. The aerial, that shows you the configuration of the two parcels together and they'll connect in the rear, that shared property line. That's where the Amazon um, is proposed. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. That's just another shot of it. And then we have, this is the, um, the Amazon property at 6300 Bowler did these plans too. You can see the connection at the bottom, right? That's where it connects to our property. Next slide. So this is it. We get rid of everything that's on the property. We get some beautification here with some landscaping. It will hold up to 574 vehicles uh, for their drivers. It has a gate, it has a guardhouse, 
um, and it functions uh, very well with the parcel next door. Um, we have been to your planning commission. They recommended approval. We have worked with Gilmore relative to the review letter. Bowler will continue to work with Gilmore. We do have our MPDES permit. We also have the draft preliminary final approval resolution that was delivered by Scott and Randy. I've reviewed it. We are fine with what is in front of you tonight and ask for your approval. Uh, I'll make that motion. <laughs> All right, we got a motion from Marianne Wagner. Anybody second on that? I'll second it, Cindy. All right, Joe seconds that. The uh, cleanup of the eyesore of window, window wizards. Um, do we have any questions from those on? And any questions, Jill, from uh, any public out there that may be viewing? We do not. I, I just okay. Madam Pre Vice President, I just have one comment. Um, I have actually worked with Bruce Goodman um, on the Abington Economic Development Committee. Um, and uh, this is one project that I know um, he, he, does, he, he does amazing. He develops a little bit more in Montgomery County that I've seen. Um, but uh, this is, you know, Kristen and Bruce and I have talked and have uh, invited him to um, tour the township and, and continue to develop. Oh, fantastic. Good. We love that. He is, he is the king of hardscaping and landscaping. So if we can find other things for him to do in the township, that would be really great. Great. We'll keep him busy. Okay. All right. we, we, we have opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Will. Randy and Randy is diligent and knocking on our door. So we'll continue to talk. Very Terrific. good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. So we have a, a motion by Marion Wagner, seconded by Joe Glasson. Um, all in favor? Hi. Hi. Anyone opposed? Perfect. Great. Thank you thank, so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you very Thanks. much. Good luck. Nice to work with you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, application of Bristol Township School District by Blue Lake Road, Levittown, requesting preliminary and final subdivision land development approval in order to build additions to the existing middle school, as well as proposed site improvements on the property located at 6401-6501 Mill Creek Road, Levittown, tax parcels number 5-37-517 and 5-37-569 in an R3 residential zoned district. And who do we have? Uh, good evening, Council. I'm Chris Jensen here with TNDM Associates, uh, the civil engineers for the project. And also on this call uh, are Dr. Garens and Josh Swigert from the school district. Hello, Dr. Garens. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Josh. As Hello. well as David Schrader, the architect for the project, and uh, Mark Roth, the traffic engineer from the Associates. Thank you all for having us here tonight. Uh, and Danielle Hoffer is on as well. Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. Um, I didn't. I didn't see you there. So uh, yes, Dan, Danny's on as well. Uh, so recall, we were here, and I'll actually share my screen if that's okay, Randy, um, for the plan. You were in front of planning before, right? Yes, we were, uh, and can everybody see the plan? I, I'm sorry. To yes. Can't. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So uh, recall we presented this plan in the summertime to, to, to council. And uh, since that time, we have been working with your, your consultant, multiple revisions and multiple review letters um, and, and um, presented before the planning commission recently where we have received uh, recommendations. For approval. Um, so just a, 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 a brief project recap. We have the, uh, the project consists of the renovation of the building, including a new addition on the right uh, hand side of the building here. Some significant improvements to the parking lot with added green space, added green in the courtyards, and um, you can see the athletic field improvements at the back of the site, 
as well as a connection to the existing bus loop that would serve the new uh, the new middle school. So that's a, just a quick recap of the project, um, some of the key features. And uh, I should also mention that we are making improvements to Mill Creek Road, including new, uh, new left-hand turn lanes. Um, so as I mentioned, we also have received a draft resolution uh, and the applicant is agreeable resolution. It includes a number of waivers. Uh, I suppose similar to uh, the, the last applicant, I if you prefer I could read through some of those waivers or um, just talk about any specific uh, waivers that you may have questions or any questions in general that you may have, in fact. Kurt, are we all good here, Kurt? Kurt? Sorry about that, I couldn't get the unmute to go off. Um, we are, uh, the, the, the plan's been reviewed a few times. Uh, we still have some comments that need to be resolved, but they're all incorporated into the resolution uh, for the conditional approval before you tonight. Uh, one of the things I wanted to make mention of is that since the planning commission meeting, there's been some back and forth on the roadway improvements. And while we don't have Pannoni's review letter yet, uh, it's our understanding that the uh, configuration of adding new turn lanes are uh, in the works and that um, philosophically, uh, Benoni believes that we're on the right path and that um, as long as those improvements are worked out to his satisfaction, then uh, he has no issue with recommending the conditional approval tonight as well. I appreciate that. Thank you, Kurt. And I, I think that was um, probably our main concern and mm -hmm. um, from planning as well when, when watching planning that the traffic along the road and what we've seen in the past at the other schools. So thank you for addressing that and taking that into consideration and clearing that up. Um, any other council members have any questions? If not, we'll entertain a motion. I will make that motion. Motion by Mary Ann Wagner. Second. Is that Second. from Pat or Joe? I don't know. Was that you, I'm, Pat? It was, I think. Okay, great. All right, so we have a, uh, on the motion, is there any questions? I'll put that to you, Jill, to let me know if there are any questions or comments from the public. There were not. Okay, thank you. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, no. Okay, well, great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, Next on the Timmy, if I can just say before, I know everybody is basically off now, but I do want council to know um, um, that the, the three out of the four applications that were on for review tonight, um, Gilmore and Associates, um, a, as well as our other consultants, worked very hard um, in a very short timeline of resubmission and working with the applicants to get uh, these projects on for council approval. So um, I, I do want to thank them. I know it was a lot of work, uh, especially with the holidays that just passed and vacations, et cetera. So um, it, it, you know, it, it's very much appreciated. Thanks, Kurt. Got to give you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, Got to give a shout out to my girl, Samantha. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> She's a woman. No, you're absolutely right. You guys are professionals and you act that way and you, you know it's high priority to get things moving and keep the things moving in, in Bristol Township and you make us look fantastic. So thank you for all you guys do do. Thank you, sorry, I just wanted to say that. No, no, that's all right. Let's all take a moment and think and bask and glory. <laughs> we bow, <laughs> we bow. All right, so next on the agenda is bids for Croydon Wastewater Treatment Plant Expansion. Contract number 20-1. Is that it? Contract 20-1. General mechanical consideration to take appropriate action. Well, uh, Steve is here, but I can, it's a very, uh, it's a very 
a wonderful bid. Um, in our recommendation from their uh, review, the bids came in um, last week. And again, they did a quick turnaround as well uh, to get this on the agenda to keep this project moving. And the uh, recommendation to award to Blooming Glen Contractors Inc. for $4,981,872. It's a lump sum bid. <sighs> <clears throat> Randy, um, any information on where the competitors were on that in terms of money? Yes. Um, so the next, um, the next bid uh, was about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars less. Or, okay. I mean more. More. Um, and then it went to five hundred thousand dollars for the third one, um, and and then it jumped up to um, two million dollars. Uh, each additional bid. So wow. uh, Glen contractors, um, I've worked with them on several other uh, projects. They're very reputable. That's uh, what I wanted to know, yeah. Yeah, that was my next question. Yeah, feedback on that. Okay, good, but yeah. you've worked with them before. Yes, and they, um, they meet the responsible contractor ordinance. Um, and, you know, it was, uh, as Steve um, Walsh explained to me that uh, it, it's, it's a sign of the times again of, um, some of the some of these types of projects haven't been around, and uh, people are looking for work and competitive bids. It's a time for competitive bids. Great, I like that. Awesome, good for us. Is for is this contractor? Uh, do they employ union workforce? Yes. They do. Sorry. Yes, they're union. Bet. Even better. Right. Terrific. It's a big time. Right. In the case, I I'd, I'd be happy to make that motion. All right, Pat Antonell, I'll make some motion. Anyone I'll second? second. That I'll sounds second. like Joe Glasson. That would be me. Awesome. Okay. On the motion, are there any questions or comments? Jill? <laughs> no comments here. Sorry. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. All in favor of awarding the contract to, what is it? Blooming? Blooming Glen. Blooming Glen. Okay. Blooming great. Glen. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, op any opposed? Perfect, great, thank you. Uh, on that line, bid, bids for Croydon Wastewater Treatment Plant Expansion Contract number 20-1E, that's electrical, consideration to take appropriate action. And uh, Steve, uh, if, if I'm missing anything, please jump in. Um, so our, our, our ordinance requires that uh, electrical be bid out separately from uh, the additional, from, from the previous um, uh, construction and mechanical work. So uh, this is a second bid um, that was at the same time as the uh, previous uh, bid. And the, there is one, two, three, four, five, six bidders. And the low bid came in um, meeting the responsible contractor ordinance to Phillips Brothers Electrical Contractors, Inc. in the amount of $169,000. Um, the next bid um, was from, uh, I've never worked with Phillips Brothers Electrical Contractors. I don't know if uh, Steve has or if Kurt has. Um, the next available bid or the next bid was from BSI who we've worked with um, and that came in about to $20,000 more and then it uh, substantially increased by uh, $40,000 to um, approximately $100,000 as each bid went up. Yes, and I had a conversation with our water resources group. Not only have they done extensive work with Blooming Glen, but they've also done extensive work with Phillips Brothers and they are extremely happy with both of these bids. Oh, great to hear, good. Mute it, Pat. I'm, I'm so sure. Sorry. I'm sure they're union. <laughs> no, no. You, well, that's question. That's a question. But I also like to know I'm where they're sure coming they're from. Union. Where are they located? Who? Phillips Brothers. Phillips Brothers. Yeah. Uh, I don't have that readily available. To be honest with you, Council Member. Okay. That's okay. I just like to know, you know, who's coming from where to do our business, and you know. We like to keep uh, uh, as many local people working as possible. I understand in projects like this, you might not have local contractors available, but you know. I think, I think it's Glenn, Glenn, they're out of Glenmore, PA. 
I believe. Okay. Good. Yeah. And it's right. a PA cool. company. I like that. Yep. Um, and that question that, that, that Joe mentioned, are they a union company? Yes, they are. Good enough. Great. Right. We'd love to hear that. All right. So do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, sir. All right, Joe. Anyone second? I'll second. I knew Ray was going to second. I knew it. I could feel it. I could Ray. Feel it. You're the man. All right. On the motion, any questions or comments? No questions or comments. Thank you, Jill. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Beautiful. Great. And the next item on the agenda, agenda is appointment to zoning hearing board, five year term. Vice uh, President, Vice President, can we take the uh, following appointments as a consent agenda once you read them all? There's only two of them, right? Yeah. Well, to so, the yeah. zoning hearing board, but there's. I uh, got one, two, three, four, five uh, different. Once you read all of them, work. we can do them in a consent agenda. Why don't we just work through them? Because I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, my last agenda doesn't have all that. So okay. we're all disappearing for a minute. And thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is from the uh, revised agenda. And that was. Do you want me to read email to you real fast? I have it. Yeah, I mean, can I defer then to Pat to take on the next agenda item? Would that be okay? Okay. Sounds like a plan to me. It's simple. Um, it, we're into item G, appointment to the zoning hearing board to fill a vacant seat. The nominee is Colleen Dunn for a four-year term, consideration to take appropriate action. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good enough. Item H, appointment to the zoning hearing board alternate, Dana Pagliaro, three-year term, consideration to take appropriate action. I'll make, I'll make that motion. Mary Ann and Joe. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item I. Reappointment to Planning Commission, Kathy Geisel, four-year term, consideration to take appropriate action. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Reappointment to the Planning Commission, Chris Harkins, five-year term, consideration to take appropriate action. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item J, reappointment to, wait a minute, I did that one. Item K, reappointment to Environmental Advisory Committee. April Whitley, five-year term, consideration to take appropriate action. I'll, I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. Got him, Jill? I just want to make sure you heard him because it was okay. muffled for me. Okay, good enough. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and the last one is item L, and that's reappointment to the Lower Bucks County Joint Municipal Authority, John Monahan, five-year term, consideration to take appropriate action. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, yeah. that's it. Uh, Madam Vice President, you have it back. Thank you, Mr. Antonello. Fabulous job. So uh, next agenda item I have says other business. Does anybody have any other business? Okay. Comments from council members? I'm good, Sid. Okay. And then we are on opportunity for residents to address council. Public comment on general and agenda items will be taken at this time. If you have a question and cannot attend the Zoom meeting, you will email your questions to Jill Mayer. Again, that's J-M-A-I-E-R at bristoltownship.org. Not prior to, but now. <laughs> we didn't get any questions. 
All right. Well, hearing that, I see that we're at adjournment. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Everyone all. be well. Stay safe. Yes. Yeah, you guys too. <laughs> we'll talk with you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Thank you.